I don't quite know how to put this, but I am kind of a big deal. I am very important. I have many leather-bound books, and my apartment smells of rich mahogany. This is my golden age room, and join me where I revisit vintage delights and smoke the finest Cuban cigars. Back in 1905, the Wright brothers were accredited for developing a flying machine, which they built into the first practical fixed wing aircraft. So therefore, if you mention the Wright brothers, the majority of people assume they were the first people to build and fly a plane. However, the brothers were not the first people to build and fly an aircraft. They were the first people to invent aircraft controls that made fixed wing powered flight possible. In reality, the first person to build and fly an aeroplane did so 11 years earlier. This was English inventor Hiram Maxim, who launched a steam-powered biplane with a three-man crew on an unintentional flight in 1894, when a restraining device failed. Both the crew and the aircraft survived intact, but Maxim never flew it again. Perhaps he realised from his one brief hop that this machine was uncontrollable. You may be wondering where I may be going with this, but I bet if you went up to the average person in the street and asked them what the first ever handheld gaming device was, I bet the majority of them would say the Nintendo Game Boy. But this is simply because they are uncultured and stupid. The reason for this is because in history, we tend to remember the biggest success stories. We tend to sometimes forget all the bumps in the road and trial and error that eventually leads to a successful end product. The Nintendo Game Boy is a system that has become a cultural icon and a symbol of the period. But before we ever got to that stage, there were many other devices in the handheld race, before we ever got to the likes of Tetris and Pokemon. Even Nintendo themselves had handhelds way before the Game Boy, such as the Game & Watch devices. Graphically, even to this day, handhelds are always a few steps behind their console counterparts. So if the best graphics of the day look like this, then you can imagine how primitive the handheld counterparts must have been. This here in my hand is Alien Attack, made by Coleco. This is one of the hundreds of portable gaming devices made before the Nintendo Game Boy. Due to its system limitations, it only comes with one pre-installed game. Could you imagine that today? Imagine if someone bought a PlayStation 4 just to play Call of Duty. To give you a little bit of history on this device, Coleco was originally a shoe leather company in the 1930s. But for some strange reason, they decided to enter the Great Pong War of 1976. They decided to enter the video game market and contribute to the already oversaturated Pong genre. Evil corporations, eh? Dare do anything for a little bit of money. Shameless and disgusting. Ugh. Even though they were just copying other people's ideas, Coleco managed to successfully plagiarise the Pong business. So their next strategy was to copy Mattel and enter handheld gaming, where this comes in. So, let's take a look. Before I could attempt to play this monstrosity, I had to pop to the shop and purchase four massive Psy-C batteries in an attempt to fill this corporate greedy cash-in. I turned the power on and sadly the system had appeared to have deceased. So in one last attempt I tried an old trick I knew which for some reason appeared to work on some of these old electronic devices and that was to spin the batteries inside the device. To my delight, on the second attempt at turning the device on, the bloody thing powered up. I could see I had a character to control on my brightly lit red and blue display. However, no matter how much I fiddled with the joystick or pressed the fire or move button, nothing sodding happened. So once again, I make the assumption that the device must be bloody knackered. So out of frustration, I start button bashing. Then to my surprise, I get a little bit of movement. 
So it turns out that bizarrely, in order to move, you need to move the joystick in the direction you want to go and hold down the action button simultaneously. To fire your gun, you need to hold down the direction you want to fire in the joystick and then press shoot. This is extremely confusing and I have no idea why they chose to go for such a confusing control method on such a simple device. The aim of the game is to simply avoid being touched by the enemies or get hit by enemy fire. You gain points by managing to successfully shoot the enemies. It is a simple high score game really, which on the bright side, I suppose, isn't drastically different from what you got in the arcades at the time. There is also a switch in the middle that allows you to turn the device on and off and select a skill level. The only difference in the gameplay of these two skill levels, however, is the speed. Overall, Coleco's Alien Attack is a primitive early handheld gaming device. However, if you compare it to the high score centric arcade and console games of the period, then this is a fairly good imitation of gaming at the time. If it wasn't for its god awful controls, I would actually end up giving this game a thumbs up. I feel that the device tried really hard to replicate the arcade experience and was only a few missteps off succeeding. So kudos to you Coleco for at least trying. If you enjoyed today's video and want to learn more or reminisce about the early days of gaming, then click one of the annotations preceding this video. I have one video for you on whether the Atari 2600 is worth playing in 2016 and another on the arcade port of Crystal Castles. I hope today's episode was an extremely pleasurable sensory experience. So if you enjoyed viewing, then I urge you to like, comment and subscribe. Cheerio! They call him Mr. Arcade. Because there isn't any game he hasn't played. He's beat the best. He scorns the rest. He's Mr. Arcade. I want to play Alien Attack. I know. That's Coleco's new Alien Attack. Play it once and you'll be back. Aliens attack from every side. You feel that there's no place to hide. They swallow you up. They blast away. You gotta shoot and run to stay in play. I like Alien Attack. Take it home. Alien Attack from Coleco. The arcade game you can take home with you.